I've been learning on uh, doing some uh, color correction techniques. Um, I'm definitely not a, a pro or anything at this, but I'm every time I do it, I think it gets a little bit better each time. Um, pretty much, they got the two images here. Ignore the left one; that's really nothing. It's the right one that we're working with. Um, that is a uh, kind of before any any correction at all is applied. Oh, except for that. There we go. That's before anything is applied to it, and that's pretty much right what it is out of the, the GoPro camera. Or not GoPro. The DJI Phantom 3 Pro camera. Um, that's the 4K footage. It's pretty dark at, at this time at night, as you can see. Um, I mean, the sun is just barely kind of coming over the horizon there. Just a little bit of light left. Um, but I still take it out anyways. But with my uh, color correction that I've been picking up on, um, I can definitely make the image look a lot better. Um, like there's there's the main difference right there. There's the before and the after, and then I also that's RGB curves, and then we also have fast color corrector and three-way color corrector. That's pretty much the three that I've been using to uh, to do it here. Um, fast color corrector is kind of like a, a white balance correction. Like I can see it's looks really bluish there and then after I apply that I think it just looks a lot more more natural there and then we got three-way color corrector uh, kind of used also to kind of apply kind of a different overall feel to it um, kind of like your more cinematic feels going your shadows are going to be more towards the blue and your midtones are going to be towards the orange at least that's what I, I think anyways um, so I apply that a little bit, so that changes the overall appearance as well. Um, so that's pretty much all I use that one for, is I adjust the master and the mid-tones. I don't touch the highlight. Just leave that as is. Um, the fast color correction is a white balance. Um, you click on this dropper, and then your, your goal is to click wherever it would be closest to being white on the image. I didn't even click, but it still changed. We can get it back here. There it goes. Pretty much the snow is obviously white, so I can pretty much click on the snow anywhere. And then it pretty much just throws your, your white balance off from what it was to make it, make it more accurate. Um, the biggest thing here is the RGB curves color correction. Um, little changes can go a long, long ways with this. And in conjunction with that, you use um, like your YC waveform and your RGB parade. Them are the two that that I look at when I'm doing this. Um, the waveform, the goal is to get your your low ends, your blacks, your shadows, at pretty much as close to zero as possible without going way over, because then you just lose all detail and pretty much just crush them shadows. Um, it looks like I'm pretty much just touching the zero. It's kind of even hard for me to see because on the monitor I can just barely see a little bit of blue touching the zero but I know on the recorded video that I play back I can see it it's kind of weird um, that's another reason because you don't have color calibrated monitors it it may look good for you and it may not look good for somebody else um, so this is kind of a, a good way of of knowing knowing where you're at um, and then you also use the high end which I have brought way up by default it's just going to be a straight line from corner to corner and you see that dropping down here boom way down it goes and then that's the image way darker um, so I'll bring it back to where it was it brings brings us back up um, this is your left side of your image this is your right side of your image um, and the reason why this is so high is because that's right like where the sunlight is coming through um, so that I am blowing out, but I don't really have much of a choice, otherwise the rest of the image is going to be pretty dark. Um, there are some more advanced ways where you can actually like put a box around here and adjust this separately, but I'm not not quite to, to that point yet. Um, so I kind of take the happy medium, I'll bring this up to about 90, and then just leave the rest as is. Otherwise the whole sky pretty much will get just destroyed from here on over. I want a little bit left there. I mean, I still think it looks a lot, lot better. 
Um, another one is the RGB Parade. Um, this one, your goal, I guess, would be to kind of make them match as close as possible. It, it'll never happen because they are, I mean, they're totally different color spectrums. But, like, if your red's way up here and your green's way down here, you kind of want to generally get them in the same vicinity. Um, I mean, these ain't, ain't that bad. Um, I've already played around it for a little bit. Um, the green is a little l lower than the red, but let's bring the red down to kind of try to make it match. Like that, and then our blue's a little high yet, so then I take that corner just a little bit. It doesn't take much. I may actually, them greens might be getting chopped off on the bottom, so let's bring it up some and see. No, it don't look like it. It just becomes a flat line. Put that back. And then they're blue. Just a hair more, I think. I mean, that's pretty close. I mean, we're right there, right there, and just a little bit more. There we go. I think that's pretty good. And then the tops are pretty similar, I think, as well, because um, I've already applied a little curve here. If you click in the middle, it'll add a new point, and you can kind of do your mid-tones as well, because the blue is actually way off, but I got it much, much closer. Um, and then we go back to the YC waveform and kind of check that because when you're moving them around, it can affect these. But I just see a little here and there. I think we're pretty good there. And then we got some 90s peaks. I don't think them were there before. But yeah, I think that looks pretty good. I mean, compared to out of the camera, we turn that off. Boom. I mean, it's, it's a night and day difference, I think. And then I use a, um, a PSD file here from in Photoshop. And if I turn that on, you'll see that that sunset kind of a lot more pronounced in the part that you can see at least that's not blown out. And there's an off and there's an on. Now that is a, a PSD file, a gradient. Um, this is 4K, so the image size is 3840 by 2160. And then I just make a just a slight, slight gradient. I don't go very far down because I found even going a little farther, it would discolor a part of the image that you wouldn't want it to. I guess it all just depends on how much how much sky you have in your image. If it, half of the image is your sky, well, then you're going to want a, a bigger gradient. Um, and you can do the same thing in the middle of the day when it's nice and sunny and blue. Well, then you would use a blue gradient. And then you just simply take that PSD file, drag it on the timeline over what you want want it to appear on, and then under opacity here you want to set it to overlay. I think it looks pretty cool. Yeah, there's before doing anything at all to the image. Turn that sunset one on, and then turn my three corrections on. And then that's after. I think that looks a lot, lot, lot better than it does out of the camera. I'm still pretty newbie at it, but I figured I'd just share a share a little video with you guys.